I can't stop crying, tears of bitterness, despair, the last ghost to kill. Ghosts dry my tears and sing to me softly, gently, rocking me to sleep. My loneliness is echoed every time I see couples together. There must be a cure for loneliness, fear, and pain. I wonder what it is. I fight bitter tears of sadness, despair, every day of my whole life. The rain soaks through me. I feel I may never be dry ever again. I fight bitter tears of sadness, despair, every day of my whole life. My tears taste of salt, and they rub into the wounds carried on my heart. No one's ever there for me when I need it most. I'm always alone. Constantly lonely, even surrounded by all who say they love me. I would rather pray my rosary than to get angry at people. I pray to be less. Less angry, less depressed, less... I am just a ghost. Nobody pays attention. I'm invisible. Ghostly wanderings take me further away from all those I love. Grief is a monster, consumes every part of you. Monsters consume me. Monsters provide us the battles we need to win in order to love. Every single day I have nothing but despair. I cry bitter tears. Every single day I pretend my hardest, and even then I cry. I am just a ghost. Nobody pays attention. I'm invisible. Invisible walks through walls of blossoming trees, feeling more ghostly. Hi, Tara and Rachel. Thank you so much for talking with me today about your books in Conversation Volume 1 and Volume 2. Um, could you tell me a little bit about yourself? Hi, thank you so much for having us, um, both for this interview and for our very anticipated and exciting book launch. My name is Rachel Taylor. I grew up in the interior of BC in Silcoton and Squatham Territory, and I now live in Victoria, which is Saanich Territory. Um, I started writing haiku as a very young child, about six or so. My mom used it as a way to uh, wa work me through some of my anxiety. It really helped to focus my attention if I had to count the syllables of the words that I was using to respond to my mother. Um, so that was kind of my very first brush with poetry and the part of the reason that I fell in love with it. Thank you so much, Rachel. How about you, Tara? I'm originally from Montreal. And I came to Vancouver in 1992 in March when I was almost 15. I've been writing poetry since I was about seven years old, but haiku poems I only started in 2017 when the grind writer friend of mine um, had a thing at her house and was teaching people how to write haiku poems. And then I became addicted to the format and I've got like, a good 4,000 haiku poems written since then. Wow, that's impressive. I'm wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about this collaboration and what makes it so special. So we started this collaboration as a mentor-mentee project through Possibilities with Gord Tulloch uh, and Jemima McDonald and Kelsey Savage. And the original plan for that collaboration was that we would work together to create a performance piece. Um, I'm a performance poet and Tara has been writing poetry for so long that really it was a mentor mentee where I was the mentee and she was the mentor. Um, however, as we started our project together of building this beautiful piece of performance poetry, uh, we ended up dealing with a global pandemic and we could no longer meet, gather or perform. Um, and so instead of doing those things uh, in order to keep both Tara and myself uh, a little more connected to each other and um, finding ways to stay connected when we couldn't be in the same place, we started sending each other haiku every day. Um, Tara would send me a haiku when she first woke up at 
four thirty in the morning because she's amazing and very productive. Uh, and I would usually answer sometime around one thirty or so when I had gotten my life together. That's basically. Uh, I thought I was the mentee and Rachel was the mentor. Um, because I'm still, I'm still, <laughs> there's so much about poetry I, I like to, um, I'm learning about still. There's, but I really enjoyed doing the going back and forth. And today's responses were super awesome, by the way. <laughs> yeah, and some of them I, I ascend are like some of the older ones are more doom and gloom. But then some of my later ones, I have some weird ones coming up, which you will <laughs> Which will make you, which you haven't seen it, but will make you scratch your head like, what am I writing about? <laughs> That'll make you kind of, will make you kind of laugh about why am I writing such weird haiku poems about whatever. <laughs> I have a haiku poem about if Jesus has allergies, or if he swiffers and cleans the house. <laughs> why not? Point of order, Jesus definitely has allergies. We have invented so many things since the last time he was here, he would show up and just be one big hive. It's so beautiful to witness how this friendship, I assume, has like grown and changed over time. It seems very much like a reciprocal relationship. Would you like to say anything more about the friendship that has emerged in this process? Um, I think one of the things that I have enjoyed so much and, uh, and learned so much from this friendship is that we come from very different places. We come from uh, very different, very different backgrounds. Even though it would be hard to recognize that, just seeing the two of us together on the street, because we look pretty similar. Um, but I think that we have both taken the opportunity to bring our kind of deepest, most vulnerable selves to this project. Um, and I have been overwhelmingly grateful to bring some of those deep and vulnerable parts of myself to Tara and have them be accepted unequivocally. Um, there has ne never been any moment that Tara has questioned why I felt something or how that was impacting everything else. Tara just believes when I say what I say. Um, and that has been uh, an absolute gift uh, and has led, I think, to us being both a little bit more vulnerable and a little bit more honest with each other. Um, because we have this, we've built this beautiful relationship together. So, I mean, definitely that authenticity of emotion and the, the relatability of the content really speaks to me as a reader. And I'm, I'm wondering if you, for someone who hasn't read the book, could you elaborate on what the content is about? Um, basically, uh, as, as Tara explained with calling it in conversation, uh, it was an opportunity for us to stay connected when we couldn't gather, when neither of us were able to attend our places of worship, and when we were both, I mean, pretty much stuck at home because we were in kind of the first phase of the lockdown that was happening in BC. Uh, and so because Tara ha it has such an incredible gift for haiku especially, um, I asked her to start sending me a haiku every day and that I would send a response uh, however that haiku had struck me. Um, so sometimes the haiku that I respond with have the same first line as Tara's last line. Sometimes I pull something from the middle. Sometimes they don't seem to be related at all, um, except that something in my brain was sparked by something in Tara's brain. Um, so this is really a uh, certainly the first volume uh, is really an exploration of how to remain connected to each other and to our faith base because we were in the middle of Lent leading up to Easter, which is, of course, one of the, the bigger Christian celebrations and one that is important to both Tara and myself. And we were trying to determine how we could stay connected to each other, to other people, and to our faith in this time of isolation. Uh, and we used this, the beautiful technology that we have access to in, in text message uh, to stay, just to keep a little bit more connected than we might've been otherwise. 
Yeah, it's a good way for us to um, get to know each other or to communicate by haiku, and I really love it. And when I saw how well it was going, I thought, well, this would make a really good book because I don't know of any other book that goes in conversation with haikus back and forth. I've seen like uh, another poem, The Shepherd and the Nymph and the Nymphs reply, reply to the Shepherd, but from other poets, but I don't know of any other collaboration that's exactly like this. It's kind of a unique book when you think about it. It's it's a one of a kind. It would be neat if um, Ellen DeGeneres or other famous people would actually see these books, or even the Queen of England. Yes, Queen. <laughs> All right, I couldn't I, I resist. Couldn't. Um, <laughs> but. I definitely do, I do agree. It's an extremely unique and powerful piece of writing, um, which is why I, I think it would be really cool if we could have the two of you recite some of the, some of the poetry that's present within the book. Okay, so here we go. Mini rosary, perfect way to say your prayers every single day. I scatter small prayers as I walk down the full streets like cherry blossoms. Do people like me or, or do they just reject me because I am weird? How can I find out if people like me or if they find me useful? My God box is chock full of the rosaries that I've collected. As I prepare to receive the bread, no wine, I sigh at his death. Grief is a monster, consumes every part of you. Monsters consume me. Monsters provide us the battles we need to win in order to love. I am just a ghost. Nobody pays attention. I'm invisible. Invisible walks through walls of blossoming trees, feeling more ghostly. Thank you both so much for sharing your work with me. And I'm very excited for more people to read it because I think that it's a very important piece of, of contemporary writing. Um, so thank you very much for that. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of your days. Is there anything you would like to say in closing? Um, check out Silverbow Publishing if you haven't. Um, they are the publishing company that Tara connected us with. Tara did all of the work to get us published. I didn't do anything. It was amazing. Um, and so Tara spoke to Candace James, who is an associate of Silverbow Publishing uh, and has been an absolute godsend in walking us through all of the things that we need to do in order to have this happen. Um, and so if you are interested in publishing and interested in publishing local, check out Silverbow Publishing. They are great. Yeah. And where can people buy the book? You can buy the book either directly through Silverbow Publishing. Um, and if you go to the Silverbow Publishing website and put in Tara Torme and Rachel Taylor, that'll lead you to some other links for purchase. Um, it's available both as an ebook through Kindle and as uh, a bound book through Amazon. Uh, yeah, Amazon is still the best place to get it. And I do know uh, Candace James through the Poet Society when it was uh, running. And she's a poet um, laureate of New Westminster. Mm -hmm. And she's also an amazing, awesome poet too. And it's just, I think it's kind of a fate thing that I connected with somebody through the Poetry League who happens to have their own publishing company. And it was like New Westminster and I like New Westminster. Uh, Candace is an incredible artist who is multidisciplinary. Not only does she write poetry and write beautiful poetry, she also paints. And in fact, um, because we were working through her and Silver Silverbow Publishing, uh, the covers of both of our books are original pieces by Candace James as well. Um, we didn't choose them. We didn't find them or provide her with cover art. Uh, she read the the our responses to each other and designed work specifically for us, which is also pretty awesome. Well, thank you both so much again. And 
enjoy the rest of your days. Days. You too. Your days. (laughs) All of the days. Enjoy all the days. (laughs) 